Hey, did you know that recently we've picked up several exciting hints about life beyond Earth? Strange gases in distant atmospheres, important molecules swirling around newborn stars, ideas that cosmic radiation could spark life beneath frozen worlds. Okay, sure, it's not a cryptid message from some galaxy with ET saying hello, but taken together, these clues point to something unexpected. Not only could there be life on other worlds, but it might be a lot more common than we ever thought. But first, let's explain how we learn what's out there in deep space. When scientists say, hey look, we found something hundreds of light years away, that doesn't mean they pointed a telescope and zoomed in on a planet like with a mouse scroll on Google Maps. Most planets are invisible, drowned out by their star's light. Instead, researchers study starlight as it filters through a planet's air. Different gases absorb specific colors, leaving a unique chemical fingerprint. Decode the missing colors, and congratulations, you know what's in the air. And that's what the James Webb Space Telescope is built for. The James Webb is incredibly impressive. NASA claims that the telescope is so precise, it could detect the heat signature of a bumblebee on the moon from Earth, if the bee stayed still long enough. That's not even the best part. Unlike regular telescopes that see visible light, JWST sees in infrared. It doesn't usually show us those far-off planets directly. Most of the time, it reads the starlight that filters through their air. Thanks to its giant gold mirror and super-cold instruments, it can pick up faint traces of certain gases from hundreds of light years away. Maybe it won't show us little green men, but if they're out there, we might learn what they're breathing. Which is what happened recently when researchers looked at K2-18b, a planet that's about 120 light years away. They picked up signs of a gas called dimethyl sulfide. Never heard of DMS? Ah, that's fair. But here on Earth, DMS is made almost entirely by life. Specifically, tiny ocean creatures like plankton. So, if you're detecting DMS here, you're probably standing near seawater with a high-tech measuring device. The whole DMS discovery sounds huge, but hold on, it's a bit early to celebrate. This doesn't mean there's a bikini bottom on K2. The signal is faint, and scientists are still debating if it's even real. And even if it is real, life isn't the only explanation. Lab experiments in 2024 suggested DMS might also form without biology under certain exoplanet-like conditions. We've even detected it in comets and interstellar clouds, places where no one expects living plankton. Still, the evidence is strong. Additional studies have shown that the odds of this signal being just a random mistake are less than a half a percent. That's solid by scientific standards, a real, okay, let's take this seriously moment. Experts say that the key question is, what kind of atmosphere does K218b actually have? If it's deep and heavy, abiotic chemistry could explain DMS just fine. But if it's shallower and has a liquid ocean underneath, then biology might be the best and most exciting explanation we've got. Either way, the outcome is huge. Scientists are either seeing the first signs of extraterrestrial life or discovering a brand new kind of chemistry. But it gets better, because the next theory comes not from examining a planet, but from what's around a protostar called V883 Orionis, in a completely different part of the galaxy, located 1300 light years away. Scientists notice something special. The baby star is still forming, wrapped in a swirling cloud of gas and dust. And inside that dusty cloud, astronomers have found 17 complex organic molecules, the kind you find in biology textbooks. We're talking about molecules like glycolaldehyde and glycolonitril, which might sound like names for supervillains made of sugar, but they're actually precursors to stuff found in DNA and RNA. From what we already know, this is quite confusing. For a long time, scientists believed these molecules only formed later, after planets cooled, oceans appeared, and chemistry had time to simmer. Some even suggested they had been brought to Earth aboard comets and asteroids, forming in deep space and surviving the cosmic journey. 
This concept is called the panspermia theory and is still debated. Regardless, it's unexpected to see pieces of the life puzzle floating around a half-built star. It's kind of like having flour and baking soda before the fire is even a thing. And it gets better. These molecules weren't destroyed by the radiation blasting out from the newborn star. In fact, some scientists think the radiation might have actually helped create or preserve them. So what does that mean? It means that basic chemistry for life might not be rare at all. In other words, the recipe for life might be already baked into star systems before planets even appear. The ingredients don't have to be created later. They're already there, just waiting for the right planet to form in the right place at the right time. But what if that's not the case? What if life doesn't even need a star in order to exist? For decades, we believed the Goldilocks zone was the only place where life could happen. The perfect cozy location. If a planet is too close to its star, the oceans boil and you get something like Mercury or Venus. If it's too far, everything freezes, and you have a giant ball of ice. However, the latest study suggests that deep underground, sunlight might not matter at all. A group of scientists ran computer models that suggested life could potentially exist in super dark frozen places, similar to what's beneath the surface of Mars, on Europa, or rogue planets, all thanks to cosmic radiation. That's right, high-energy particles from deep space are constantly pelting planets and moons at nearly the speed of light. Normally, radiation is the bad guy. It mutates cells, damages DNA, and even fries spacecraft electronics. But in the right conditions, it might have different roles. Earth is protected from cosmic rays because it has a thick and awesome atmosphere. But on planets with thinner atmospheres, like Mars, these rays can reach the surface and possibly below ground. Cosmic rays hitting underground ice can split water into useful chemicals, like hydrogen, oxygen, and other reactive stuff that might support microbes. Just enough to kickstart life. This led researchers to propose a cool new idea – the radiolytic habitable zone, a region where cosmic radiation is the main energy source driving chemistry underground. Simulations show that Enceladus, one of Saturn's moons, might be the best bet for life supported in this way. This really changes everything. Because if life doesn't need warmth, sunlight, or even a star, then our idea of habitable may be way too narrow. Suddenly, there are way more worlds that could have life hidden away. Very primitive forms of life. Because without sunlight, there's no photosynthesis, no plants, no food chains like we know them. The energy supply is just too small. So, as far as we know, complex life probably still needs a star. But simple life? Not necessarily. On Earth, some of the oldest and toughest organisms live off chemical energy deep underneath. Surviving without the sun, bacteria in caves, microbes beneath glaciers, and even weird life forms near boiling vents at the bottom of the sea. They might thrive by tapping into the chemistry around them. These are called chemoautotrophs, and they might be exactly the kind of life that's most common in the universe. We'll just have to wait and see. So, to recap, life might be floating in alien atmospheres, hiding in baby star clouds, or stuck deep underground, eating cosmic rays and radioactive things. If all of these theories turn out to be correct, it's not just exciting, it's revolutionary. Life doesn't need ideal conditions. It adapts, it endures, and maybe it's everywhere. Not to mention that there still might be some complex life forms out there. We just can't see them. Or maybe they're staying silent, like the universe is a dark forest. Space is just that huge. By the time the James Webb Space Telescope captures something, it might already be gone. Until ET sends us that message. If we don't want to feel alone in the universe, even a microscopic cell counts. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.